like to give thanks to God for uh, the grace that he's uh, poured into our lives. And it really started, of course, when we were saved in uh, 1993 in Long Island, New York. We were Roman Catholic folks just searching to see if you know, God would save us. And by studying his word and being interactive with other Christians, he finally sent a man uh, named David Crompton to, uh, to teach us the gospel, and, and we were saved. Because of getting saved older and having 30 years worth of garbage and lies rolling around in our head, um, it, it was a rough way to go. And we really, we had access to God's Word and God's Spirit, but we really didn't get it as far as, you know, how exactly does this fruit in our life happen? And so it's been a journey, but the Lord has been very gracious to us. And pretty much two years ago, starting with a biblical counseling class with Nick Ellen, and then taking a discipleship call changed into his image, the Lord has shown us how to walk in the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, and we are finally maturing in Christ. Well, it actually started before um, uh, Nick Ellen's class with um, Dave Collings okay. in Cleveland, Ohio, when he started to teach us um, theology uh, through the Institutes of the Christian Religion by John Calvin. And when he took us through Romans chapter 8, um, it finally became very apparent that God was not pleased with our flesh and that the only way that we were going to please Him was by uh, living out our lives in the Spirit. One of the first verses I had memorized was 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, one year, two years, five years, ten years into my salvation, I knew I was that same miserable woman that I was when I accepted Christ and confessed him as my Lord and Savior. So what did that cause me to do? It caused me to question my salvation because certainly I didn't feel I was the new creature. And... As my husband said, that Romans chapter 8 says that those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And I knew I was tired of living a life of death, unproductive, unfruitful, and at that point, by God's grace, I decided to challenge Lori Sokolowski's thoughts versus the Word of God and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, as the scripture says. And that is when things started to uh, change for me. Yeah, and as I have shared uh, before, I had a lot of issues with anger and uh, never really understood why I was so angry other than my wife didn't respect me, my wife didn't necessarily love me, my kids didn't respect me, they didn't listen to me, they didn't love me. So I think I had a lot of reason to be angry, but the fact was, is I was trying to live the Christian life uh, in, this, in the flesh. It was the uh, very warning that Paul gave to the church at Galatia that why did you start in the spirit but then continue in the flesh? And, and that was the story of our lives. I would um, like to close by thanking the Lord for his abundant grace, strengthening my husband by his grace to be a faithful, loving husband when I was a miserable, hateful wife and mother for the first 15 years of our marriage. And I want to thank the Lord for making the promise real to me in my life because I will testify to the fact that I am a new creature in Christ. And I boldly proclaim the promise of 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and I would uh, finish also by saying that I want to thank the Lord for the trial. That at the time, it was so miserable and so painful and so deep and dark. But it caused me to uh, call upon him in a way that I would never call upon him. It caused me to depend upon him in a way that I would never uh, depend upon him for. And so God knows that you're in the trial. In fact, he's orchestrated that trial 
but it's going to be for his glory because it's going to cause you to do something you've never done before. It's going to cause you to do the counterintuitive thing, which leads to uh, holiness and righteousness and, uh, again, the glory of God.